Hello, gente. Bienvenido to this space. So today we're going to have a awesome panel with some communities of Latin America. So here we have Changing the Game, Latam Initiatives. I am going to be representing Colombia, but I want to present you my awesome teammates for other different parts of Latin America. So I would like you to introduce, like, who are you? Where are you? What do you do? Lulu, lulu, lulu. Tell me more. Go on, okay, thank you, Sandy. So my name is uh, Guido Arcella. I'm originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina, but I live uh, currently in Mexico since 2015. And I'm uh, the audio director at Arcella Sound. We do audio for video games from uh, Mexico. So um, thanks so much and uh, so, so glad to be here, and I'll pass the mic to Sol. Hi, everyone. I'm Sol uh, from Femdes Peru. Uh, I am Peruvian. I live in Peru. Uh, at Femdes, the Femdes Peru is a community where we want to promote and visibilize more women in the industry. And I'm also a game developer at Sunbird Pixel. Hi everyone, my name is David Lucio. I'm from Colombia, but I'm, I live in Panama, so I'm streaming from Panama right now. I am the director of the Latin American Games Showcase. It's basically a platform where we strive to better and improve and boost the signal of games being developed in Latin America or by Latin American teams around the world. Um, and we are actually just like, um, doing the final touches on our next edition of our showcase this October as part of the month long celebration of the Hispanic heritage. So, um, so I don't know, follow our socials at Lex showcase so you can see what we're doing. Well, uh, my name is Sandra Castro Pinzon. You can call me Sandy, Sandra Castro Pinzon. Is the <laughs> so I am from Colombia too. I am the organizer, sorry, I am the director of Tan Grande Jugando, a game dev community in my country, that also is the organizer of the Women Game Jam here in Colombia. We also organize the Global Game Jam and the Game Jam Plus over here, among other initiatives that promotes the game dev industry. Uh, next, we're going to have the second question for our guests, and it is, how did you start your organization? Okay, cool. So in my case, in Orcella Sound, uh, first of all, uh, I studied music uh, along, like, since I was very young, you know, I started playing violin. From violin, I started doing production, music production. And at around 18 years old, I started collaborating with uh, game students uh, and film students as well on their scores for their video games. That's when I found out all these amazing human beings uh, developing amazing games. My first uh, game developers conference was in 2015. And that's when it all started, right? So I, I funded my my company where we provide audio for video games. We do music, sound design, and audio programming. And as well, um, in the in later in, in another question, I will I'll talk about a, a little bit of some events and initiatives that we are um, providing to young game composers or musicians that want to enter uh, from Latin America to the uh, industry, to the video game industry, as well as some uh, interesting works that we're doing in uh, in Latinx in games too. Well, in my case, uh, Femme Peru started when I was working for the first time in video games. And I had this friend that we just like, we met at work because back then, like I didn't have uh, many uh, women friends because, you know, in the industry, there are many girls. And so we were talking and she got to meet uh, some amazing woman devs in Spain, she's femme devs. And she was like, hey, why don't we have this in Peru? Uh, like we should have this. And so after some talking and also like getting inspired by her, I was like, okay, let's do this. So with another friend of ours, uh, we three started like planning, like, okay, we want more friends in the industry. And what can we do to like have more girls here, like talk about video games, make games, share our experiences, everything. 
So we started just creating these small events uh, here in Lima. Like our first event was literally just one post on Facebook saying, hey, we're going to meet on this Starbucks this day at this hour. So come join us, have a coffee with us. And some some other three girls like came and we started talking and some of them stayed as part of the, the team as well uh, years later. And then we also like organize now, for example, the, the woman game jam, but in Peru and it's one of our biggest events here. And it's amazing because it's just, this is a space where like girls come and just talk. And well, in the case of the game jam, it's uh, coming to for, for the first time to develop video games because so many of them don't know how, like what the industry is like here in our country, or just don't know that there are more girls involved and like it's amazing to see them getting inspired and getting ready to just conquer the world. <laughs> um, and on my side, I I am I'm actually a filmmaker. Like I started in film. Um, I started film back in the day, and then I started a production company. And through that, I started creating content with my wife. And we started off a couple of like social media platforms to just like talk about games and stuff that we love. And um, and during the pandemic, we started Twitch, and I love the whole idea of creating and collaborating with other creators. And um, and I've had the the, the fortunate to be um, I, I've been fortunate enough to go to PAXs and E3s and all that stuff. And I've always wanted to recreate that for us and find a way to create something through what I can do that's film production and all that stuff to actually support our industry. And that's where the whole idea for the Latin American Games Showcase come from, like from this uh, intent of helping through the means that we have. Like I'm no dev at all. Like I have no uh, programming abilities or I'm not an artist or, or anything like that. So I'm, I, I was looking for something to do that used what I could do to support the industry I love. Um, so the Latin American Game Choker started as that, as an idea to find a place where we can all look for and find Latin American um, games that are being developed in Latin America or around the world. And, um, and that's been very... Um, I don't know. I'm very proud of the initiative just because I think that one of the biggest struggles that we go through, and I know we have a later question for that, but I just want to jump into that. And it's that, um, like f just finding out who we are and what we're doing and where our games are and that we're actually uh, doing a lot of great stuff. So I just wanted to find a way to feature all of that. And that's where the Latin American game showcase comes from. Oh, really low. Uh, as you can see, all the people that is here is like uh, from different careers. Um, personally, I'm a journalist. I'm a master in political communication, and my organization start uh, in uh, bad mood. You know that Colombians are really angry. Well, well <laughs> the best ideas come when <laughs> we are really angry. So, I was in a family gathering with the family who is now my ex-husband. And the thing was, this conversation, this usual conversation that we have in all the families, and it is like, oh my God, you're too old to keep on playing. And I didn't like that conversation at all. And I didn't like it because he was the one that was playing, the only adult that was playing with the kids. And those kids are his, uh, it, it, like, it's not even his sobrinos, it's her cousins. So it is like the only adult that it is playing with the cousins. And that was really sad. Like everyone, like, I don't know, the way that we uh, think about the right of playing is that I'm going to give you a cell phone, like, okay, go and play, you know? And instead of taking care of you or your kids, right? So I was like super mad and I really want to change that. So I go home. <laughs> And I was like putting ideas of what I was going to do to change the world <laughs> and a whole culture that it is something that is happening in every homes, right? Uh, so I start the idea to put it like a, like a streamer and to make some videos and everything. But the truth is that I am a really bad player. I'm a really bad gamer. In Mario, I am. I always going to die in in the holes. You know, like I am going to jump <laughs> inside the hole and all of that. So I started also with my well, you know, the tools that I have. 
in that case, I started making interviews with this guy. It's called Cagua Nutriales. So this guy used to make the interviews and he was the one that was in front of the camera. So the first time that we were doing something was interviews. And then a year passed and we start to make events, game dev events. And with, of course, that idea to promote more the game dev industry, to promote more gaming, consuming, playing, and gathering in family. So, you know, the name of the translation of my brand is an insult. It is, you're too old to keep playing. That is tan grande jugando. And we embrace that. We were like, well, I say we, but it is me and my other me, clearly. Of course, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> After that, well, we're now the brand that's called Tan Grande y Jugando, which is now creating a lot of different events, a lot of content, and a lot of new ideas. Uh, we love to read you, so please leave us your comments, please leave us your questions, because we're going to read them all, and we love to know more about your opinions, know more about, like, what, what would you like to know about our game dev communities? And we're going to pass now to the next question, which is about what are the events that these organizations do in their own countries? How they impact the game development countries in their regions too. Okay, thank you, Sandy. So I, uh, I just, uh, just present myself uh, doing audio work for video games. And uh, besides that, I really like, or I really enjoy teaching Right. So during the pandemic, I, I was lucky enough to to do some interesting online courses on music for video games. We opened the first edition on um, the course of music for video games in the university, Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mexico. That's the one of the biggest universities in Latin America. And we were super happy because there were past editions about, you know, film scoring or music for films, but there was not, you know, content or, you know, a, a, a course teaching, you know, how to do interactive music for, for video games, right? So besides that, we, I, I started uh, teaching in, in other countries too, also virtually, right? Uh, I was in, I think, in, in uh, Peru, Argentina, uh, all around Mexico as well. It was, it was super fun teaching some uh, interactive music and audio for video games. And from there, I, I, I decided to uh, open my own um, kind of uh, portal or, you know, music academy teaching uh, just, you know, like how uh, the, the, the principles of audio for, for video games, right? So in, in the academy that, uh, that Arcella Sound in my, in my company we created, I, I just posted the, the link in the, in the Zoom chat. We, we have online courses, not only audio for video games, but also film scoring and also entrepreneurship uh, courses to teach you how to engage in the industry, right? So uh, what I saw in, in many of, of music students, uh, it was the you know the cap capability on um, on having all the the tools to to score video games or to make sounds in video games, but uh, sometimes they were lacking on you know uh, on tools on how to network or how to engage in the community, right? So uh, with that uh, third course, uh, we wanted to um, equip the student with the right tools. To engage the community, right? That's the the first kind of pillar on, on on the academy. The second pillar that I think it's even most important it's internships. So we partnered with many universities in Latin America that they have a game students or they have a game dev curricula where our students in the academy can we can pair them with a game uh, projects, right? So what we're trying to do is engage them since they are learning this all this stuff you know uh, all these um all these tools and apply them to real products right we, they, they are not rescoring games they are like playing um that they, they're scoring and also helping you know uh, game developers young the game develop, developers that in the future they will have their own company for example right so we're 
trying to place them in the industry right away while they are starting, right? That's the second pillar. And the last and third pillar is that we just uh, have, you know, um, a validation of a, a certif uh, like valid certification from uh, the Universidad Católica de Salta, there's an Argentinian university with academic value. So you can, you know, you can take these online courses, have these amazing internships, and also you can have a certificate diploma through our portal, right? So um, the last couple of months, it was like, heavy, heavy, you know, uh, uh, doing this, all this inter interface and, you know, all this uh, machinery and recording these online courses. So, you know, all these uh, musicians and it, by the way, it's all in Spanish, right? So, so it's, it's pretty cool to have all this uh, value in, in our language, right? So um, that was my, my challenge this year to bring this huge platform to life because my 20 year old Guido always wanted this, you know, like, for example, I was always struggling, you know, once I, 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 I did my degree in music. So what's next, you know, how can I connect who, who can mentor me or who can pair me to uh, students or, or games or films uh, also to, you know, to start working. Right. So this academy, what we we're trying to do in this academy is to pair um, students game music students, also film music students to game developers uh, students too, right? So that was, that's one of events slash platforms, right? The second event that I just wanted to, um, to present is um, um, a project with Latinx in gaming. Again, uh, I just posted the URL in the Zoom chat. It's we're doing an amazing uh, collaboration with Latinx in Gaming with also a studio in Mexico called Cometa Games, where we are developing uh, resources for um, young game developers as well, right? Uh, in form of cliff notes. So it's, it's a very fun project that we were, uh, we started since I think two years ago. Um, we're trying to, you know, to expand in different categories and different, um, different um, departments, right? Design, audio programming, etc., with basic concepts on how to start uh, your game dev journey. So it's, it has been fun with uh, Latinx in gaming and we're super thankful to, to do this collaboration with them. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, Guido, something that you said it really inspired, which was the phrase of what would have my younger self wanted back then? And I think that's the same emotion that uh, we had for FemDev Peru when when we created the space because it was like like honestly when I started in, in the industry I would have wanted to know more about it uh, while I was starting because uh, at least for me I didn't know anything about video games when I started working so that was like a huge change and I was like really intimidated by many things that I didn't know and I like I felt like I needed to learn, but sometimes like a lot of information, it's overwhelming on so having that like resume uh, or like access to more information and also in Spanish, which is very important, especially for us, because uh, not everyone know English. Uh, so yeah, it, for FemDef, it was the, kind of the same. Uh, lots of our, um, um, the things that we've done for the community has been inspired for that, for what, for this phrase that I also said before, that it was like, we want more friends, more women friends in the industry. Uh, we want to meet them. So we created those spaces uh, for like casual meetups in a Starbucks. Um, also, uh, we started with workshops, for example, like the basics, game design workshop, programming workshop, everything that we knew that, um, everything to attract also uh, the people that were, we kind of knew were interested in video games, but that sometimes they just don't come up because like they are not sure, they feel insecure about it. And we understood that feeling. So it was like, hey, this is a safe environment. Come here, come learn. And with that, we started uh, gaining more uh, women in our events. And until finally, we started with the Women Game Jam, which is something that I mentioned before. And it's uh, our biggest event uh, so far. Uh, we also, uh, Tan Grande Jugando, that's the Colombian version. We, we do the Peru uh, version here. And it's this amazing feeling of 
just sharing about the event and many girls that you haven't seen them in any other events on game dev in in our countries and they just come here because it's like oh wow only women like i'm interested just because of that they're interested and they came uh, they come and and they just want to learn uh someone sometimes they love the event so much uh that they keep like um uh, like they still participate in the community. Sometimes even next year you see them uh, in other events, not just Femme Devs Peru events, but in other events, which is amazing because it's like, okay, now you've been inspired here. Okay, now go, go, go uh, learn more. Uh, if you have more questions, know that you can come here and ask them. Uh, it's it's more of, uh, Femme Devs is, is more of like that, a more focus on persons that are beginners or like, have more doubts in the industry and even if you have like a lot of years in the industry you can come here and i don't know be a mentor or uh, do a workshop a panel something so that's really it's really nice to contact also other devs not only from peru because also uh, since pandemia we also like branched our alternative to okay we're gonna do a discord talk and we can invite someone from colombia from chile from united states you know like it opens, uh, it opened us that possibility, and that was amazing. And well, outside of Femdev Peru, I also participate in other um, initiatives, and one of them is uh, Junsa Games Festival, which is the first Peruvian game developer event made here in Peru. We did our first edition last year. Uh, it was last year or this year. I think it was this year in <laughs> April. Like time is crazy uh -huh. right now, but <laughs> yeah, I think it was April of this year. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it was like, uh, I mean, it was our big event as a group uh, for the Pixel Carnival group. Uh, we are, we are four people, uh, game developers that were like, okay, we need a, an event on Peru, but we want like a party. We want to to make a festivity for the industry, something like something Peruvian related to. That's why it's called Junsa Games Festival. Junsa comes from a Peruvian festivity where people just gather, come with, uh, we and they decor like a, a tree with gifts and things, and they start cutting the tree. And once that tree is cut, uh, people get the gifts, and it's kind of like a party celebrity of of all the community. So we didn't cut a tree, <laughs> but it, it was this uh, feeling of, hey, come here, we have gifts to share. Uh, we're gonna do, uh, we also uh, do the, how do you say, premiación? Like uh, like award ceremony? Yeah, award ceremony, ceremony thank you. <laughs> award ceremony for, uh, for the games. And it was really amazing. And then we had uh, what we call here Hora Loca, which is a big party with all the devs that came. It was really fun really and it kind of felt like uh, a bit of this emotion of other outside events that we had went before like gdc or some people that went to eva or other where you just like you're talking with people that are also devs and it's more natural it's not it doesn't feel like networking networking but more like hey hi i'm so like i'm here and i do this you know it, it was it felt really nice and and we hope to keep uh making this event for next years too and other initiatives that I participate as well, it's for the 7-Bit Foundation that it's, it comes from this studio of 7-Bit Games. They do uh, Redeem uh, Games. They have uh, one, um, how do you say, sede? Sorry for my English words. Um, venue? Like, venue, I think, yeah, in Peru. Like, where they have the company in Peru and other countries, and and they did this uh, scholarship of, it's called Samurai Scholarship, because they have a character that it's a samurai, but it's for Peruvian developers that want to go to the GDC for the first time. So they cover uh, the financial uh, costs for the travel, because, you know, going to GDC from Latin America, it's a big cost. So it, it's amazing that they they wanted to uh, do this um, financial support for the devs. Uh, so I definitely, once they told me, like, I was all in to support them. Um, I love that many Peruvians like had this, are starting to have these uh, opportunities to go abroad, not only to just uh, have the the knowledge here of game developers, because that I, I, I don't know if you feel it too, but I feel like that's important, like not only to share in our own communities, but also outside of them, whatever that's Latin America or just even more outside of it, because uh, you learn a lot from everywhere. But yeah, that's what we do. Yes, I agree. I, I totally agree with that. Like, I think one of the um, 
and I guess that goes back to the Latin American game choker. So I guess that's a, 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 a great segue to me answering your question. And it's like, I, I truly believe like the only way for the Latin American games industry to actually make a dent is to work together, like not like uh, just work across frontiers and find ways to just see us as a powerhouse instead of a lot of little people trying to do their best. Like if we work all together, I think that's better. And I think that's like the whole spirit of the showcase. And and precisely from that same spirit, like everything we're trying to do goes towards the same thing. Like we're trying to, again, create like spaces where people can network and meet each other and 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 find out about about other games. I, one of the things that made our team, our team very proud from the last time is that we also try to work a lot with content creators. And that's because that's where we started. So we have some empathy towards that side of the industry. And um, and we had like 80 something content creators from around the world. And it was really cool to see people from Chile reacting to like, oh, that's a Chilean game. Like I had no idea that that game's coming out of Chile. And that's the same thing with Peru and Brazil and Mexico and Colombia and Argentina and all those countries. Like it's not even about um, us as communities trying to find those games. Like even the gamers within our countries don't know we're actually developing games. So like creating spaces for that, I think it's like, amazing and i think it's really important um and 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 some of the services that we want to provide as the showcase or as, as the latin american game showcase is to provide marketing tools for game devs especially like the, um, one of the things that we found out when we were doing the first edition was that a lot of the teams maybe don't have a trader don't have an in-house editor they don't know how to build a trader or like actual marketing assets um, so we ended up helping a, a couple of them with those. So now we're trying to offer that to the teams. Like, dude, if you have a game and you think that you need a better trailer or you need help to find out how to do a trailer, let us know, and we'll try to find and we'll um, help you out with that. We did even voiceovers and stuff like that for our last showcase for some of the games. Um, I, I truly believe that networking is also the key. So we're trying to figure out how for the next edition in next year in April to have like um, like a mix kind of thing where we can have developers from around the continent come to Panama and show off their games and like collaborate. Um, and besides that, we also do something called Twitchella. That's like a Coachella wordplay for Twitch, where we have like content creators. Um, last time we had 40 something um, and all the streams were fundraising for UNICEF. And between those streams, we had some talks with, we had one with, with, with Gil about uh, sound design in Latin America. We had one with, um, we had also Sandy joining us in Latin American Game Choker where we did deep dives for some of the from some of the developer teams. So like we're trying to create spaces where people can find our games and also for us to find other creators around the space that can collaborate. Um, so I don't know. I mean, hopefully we can we can achieve the goals that we've set for our platform to better support not only the industry but also creators that live around the industry. Okay, so it's my turn. Uh, for the Colombian side, we are the organizers of three jams. These are like the obligatory jams that we create in the year. So the first one, it is our series jam. And Sol already mentioned it, is the Women Game Jam. Uh, that's the jam that will look sponsored. That's the jam that will look like a lot of love, mentorship. For example, this year we have 40 mentors from Colombia on the digital side. So the ones that have their local site and they didn't have enough mentors there, or the, it was a question that it was really hard, they use our mentors in Colombia. So the support for all the ladies. We have also uh, the Global Game Jam. We are a virtual location, but we're constantly looking that other parts of the country create that. So we are, we describe our, Jugando, like the community of communities because it doesn't work for us if we're the biggest community we what it works for us is that in that specific region um, it's happening the game development and we help them get the tools of what is happening there so in the global game jam we help the people to find sponsors to find mentorships to find what they need to have their location and we do the Game Jam Plus. The Game Jam Plus is a competitive Game Jam, which you are really, really invited 
It is different from the other game jams in terms of competitive. You know that Latinos in gaming are going to have their jam just now, and I'm going to be jamming there. Uh, but this jam is a 48-hour jam that is looking for that 48-hour project to jump into like the business industry. So they choose the winners from each country and each region to go to Brazil and to find publishers and to go like in an investment and accelerate them or accelerate their part. So that's super awesome. So Tangran is also part of that. Sorry, my Spanish broke, my English broke. Auxilio. Uh, so also, ayuda. <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, we have another event our, because those are jams uh, so for other universities and also like organizations we have our game jam meet uh, we knock the doors of the organizations to make them all their jam right so universities or other communities have their own jam with the tools of Tan Grande Jugando so if you want the kit, you just knock the door. Like, Sandy, I want to create the jam for my community. Please help me. Of course, that those materials are in Espanol. So, so sorry for that, but are super basic for people to how I open on each punto io for a game jam. So those are tools that people don't really know in our site. Creo que Sandy, caput. Ah, pensé, pensé que era mi internet. No, no, no. Sorry. Tan grande, tan grande y pausando. No. Por ahí regresa, por ahí regresa. Pero no sé si, should we just go to the next question? Uh, yeah, I, I think we can. Back? Yeah. I think we can. Okay, so the next question is, how is the game dev industry in your country? What are some challenges your organization faces? Oh, um, me morí, me morí. Sorry, I died. It was only for the drama, you know. <laughs> like, and I was like, just like, ay, perdón, me you were like, cámara. this is too chill. No, we need drama. <laughs> yeah, I was just putting the drama here, people. So sorry for the show. Uh, I don't know what you listen. So we have an event that it is like Comic Con, but it is bigger than Comic Con. So that is, event is called Sofa, which is a uh, Salon del Ocio y la Fantasía, like the room of fantasy and spreading time. I don't know how to translate Ocio. Nadie en el team sabe cómo So it's like chilling, chilling and fantasy. Yeah, it, it is leisure, about leisure. Yes, hobbies. leisure. Leisure. That's a great word for that. I've learned okay. a new word now. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. Elegant. Very. Thank you very much. Demasiado. Gracias, caballero. So, <laughs> there we have our own pavilion. So, this initiative has started a long back ago. Our first step inside was in 2019. And the space that we have, it was like six meters four by 12, something like that. So it was like a small room, but for a lot of experience. Now, this year, I have a full pavilion of game game development there to show to the people. So the ongoing people can see the work that the Colombians are doing inside the game dev industry. Because you see, in my country, they don't, and I believe that all of our countries, don't really know that we create video games and that we do a lot, a lot of awesome stuff. So that's super sad for outside. And well, also uh, me personally, what I do is also I advocate with the different organizations that are part of our country, like government, universities to open those spaces. And I'm usually always in governmental events opening and talking about the game dev industry because I am this kind of ñoña, you know, like super uh, obsessed with the topic of game development and po public policies. So I am always there trying to talk and open these spaces. For the moment, I have to say, like, we haven't had yet uh, governmental sponsorship, for example, for events or 
no, but yes, their partnership for our events. So that's pretty nice for our side. In the next question that I am going to give to our dearest panel is how is the game dev industry in your country? What are the challenges that your organization faces every day? Thank you, Sandy. Um, so me being in uh, Mexico, first of all, you know, as a, as a game audio studio, I'm kind of functioning as an outsourcing studio, really, for, um, for uh, video game companies. So um, I, I kind of, I could start, you know, with the second question of what are some challenges your organization faces? And what I, I think one of the challenges that we were, we were facing and actually were like still, you know, um, fighting for is the, you know, obviously, you know, all these great opportunities or great games that need audio, for example, right? And, um, uh, it's it's great to see how you know well the many phases of for example the pandemic right how uh, all this virtuality or or you know or of, of you know online meetings and you know uh, doing all these uh, discovery calls on on a virtual way could ease or could uh, leverage the you know the opportunities of working. Uh, from Latin America to the world, right? So I think that that was a huge plus uh, during the pandemic. And because of that, I think in our studio, it was a, a great uh, opportunity on, 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 on that matter. On the side of, of, the, of the academy, for example, uh, it's amazing also how online courses and also even the universities and other institutions are open to collaborate with uh, their students and their game projects especially we, we were talking, you know, with David, Sol and Sandy about jumps, right? And I think not now that we're like uh, having all these uh, ideas bringing up as, as a group, uh, I think I, I need to, to then to, to reach out to each one of you to, to know more about your jumps because uh, one of the aims and challenges we want to, we, we want to go for is the um, kind of the, the, alliances or, you know, the, the um, teaming up with different organizations to, to also have opportunities for people who are doing music and audio to help other, other um, game developers from every part of Latin America. And thus, as um, David said, you know, like functioning every country from Latin America as one, right? So we have, we are like, very articulated and working together. And I think that's very important to to visualize to the world that we are, you know, we're we are, we are one huge industry, you know, we're working together. Yes, anytime, you know, uh, I can always talk about game jams and other events. <laughs> I have a lot of experience of what to do and what not to do. <laughs> but, um, well, talking about the... Uh, what was it? The challenges? Um, well, as fem devs, one of our challenges is uh, financial support. Uh, we actually just, uh, last year, we received a donation from uh, One Sun Gaming Fund, which was an amazing donation that we could, uh, with that, um, expend it on finally register from the Peru as a non lucrative organization here in Peru, which means uh, now we can also ask for donations for more uh, companies, people. We're still uh, on the process of some documentation and legal stuff that we have to do, but that opens us <laughs> a, a huge uh, thing for us. So we can start also investing more on our events, on also um, paying some people on our team because from 2018 that we've been doing these events it has all been volunteer work and you know that well volunteer work uh, doesn't pay the rent so we always have to balance that with our own work and so yeah it's been a, a it's why sometimes also you'll see in communities maybe some time of silence and then some time of oh we're doing this event you know so be patient with all your communities because it's out of love you know <laughs> sometimes uh, we don't have the sponsors we didn't have uh, 
uh, you know, those all the resources, but we're doing what we can, what we're, what we have, you know, and it's about that of just keeping inspired and doing things that also we we're passionate about. That's why we're doing this because we love the industry, we love the community, so we do we do that. On the game development industry in Peru, um, something that David says that it's also definitely here in Peru is that not many people know that in Peru uh, there are game development companies, studios that are making games, that there are some popular games that are also getting recognized outside of Peru, but not even Peruvians know about them. So we, uh, our one of our main uh, challenges is like, uh, you know, just making propaganda about this because that also will impact on, for example, if our government want to invest in what industry. They, if they don't know nothing about video game industry, they, they don't gonna invest in that. Uh, other companies, they're not gonna invest in us if they don't know about our company. So that's kind of like a big of a challenge. There are now some initiatives. Uh, there is an association called here, uh, CBA Peru, for example. Uh, actually my studio, Sombra Pixel, it's part of that uh, association, which uh, also is, it's another initiative that is also working on, you know, reuniting the, the the studios, the games that are being made and making a lot of propaganda, trying to talk with the government, trying to talk with other, uh, what other options do we have to to promote those, uh, that work that we're doing. And uh, financial support, because, you know, I think this is something common in Latin, Latin America is that sometimes many resources, uh, license, you know, of programs, or just going to an event, it's all outside. That's a lot of money you need to invest. And if you're starting as a developer, you don't sometimes have all that resources. And that's when you go to, you need a funding, you need a publishers, something, uh, not many people. Uh, I think most of the studios that started here in Peru were uh, from work and hire work, you know, that a big company from other country uh, wants to make a game and that they'd hire your company to do the game. Uh, but many of us want to create our own games. So that's the difficult part because I mean, there are a lot of things that you can do also, but I think that will be like another talk, but yeah, those are the challenge, uh, the type of challenges that, that we do. So initiatives like, uh, for example, uh, as the beat, you know, that make these huge events where we can also like get to show our game. It's amazing <laughs> to to just keep uh, keep doing the propaganda from other countries, our own country, you know, it, that's the important stuff. Yeah, visibility, right? Like people just knowing about us. And I think that that even that lack of visibility within our own industries, like, um, because I'm not only saying like from the consumer side, like we don't know who is and why are they not uh, developing games. Like in Panama, I've had um, instances where I meet with a development team who feels that they're like the only team that's developing a game in Panama. And I, and I feel that that sense of being alone or being a minority um, um, ends up being being something that works against your own will to find a way to make it work. You know what I mean? And um, so like, for instance, Panama, ha one, that's one of the biggest issues in Panama, I think, and it's not only we don't know about each other, but also there's a, a complete lack of understanding of the business from a governmental standpoint. Um, so we're going, and I think we're all going through like a process of escolarization and education for the people that can eventually give us money. And that takes a lot of time out of game development. So there's like a lot of steps that have to like go side by side because we have to catch up so much to industries that have been developing outside of the of Latin America. Um, so that's that's like from specifically from Panama. Um, I think that jams are a great thing because jams, especially in our uh, ecosystem, help people to find teams to work. Like I've known I know like from the from the jams that I've been to or that I've heard from that there's a lot of actual games that have been published that have come out of those jams. So I think those initiatives are very important. And again, as Sandy was saying, like I'm also helping with the global, global, with Game Jam Plus here from Panama. So like that's one initiative that I think is great. And I think that um, 
the more people that know of this, especially like students that are working in programming or animation or stuff like that, if they find out about those opportunities, I think that that lack of awareness of how the industry, how big the industry might be locally could disappear or at least be fixed. Um, and what are some challenges that my organization specifically faces, like the Latin American Game Showcase faces? It's, it's the same. <laughs> it's like finding the games. Um, like Sol knows and, and Sandy knows, like I've contacted them directly, like, dude, I need games from Colombia, I need games from Peru. Um, my net just doesn't reach them. Like, how can we find them and how can they know that we're trying to support them? Um, so like, since what we're trying to do is feature games and showcase games and hopefully market them a better way, our biggest struggle is finding those games or at least creating a social platform that, um, has the the necessary reach so that we can actually reach those games so they can actually hopefully uh, take advantage of our platform um so like being in these types of webinars and collaborating with people like my co-panelists it's great because it's a it's one of the ways that we have found to stretch our reach and to find more games and more people that want to collaborate with our with our mission around and our efforts so, yeah, I mean, it, it all goes down to we need money, but we need to educate people to give us money and we have to work together to collaborate and make this work. <laughs> okay, so for my Colombian side, I will tell you that what is more difficult for me is uh, to having that impulse to keep on working with the game dev industry in terms that uh, every year, every year, I have to talk again with the person that it is now in the same uh, job office, you know, like in the ministry, they change you, everyone <laughs> in the, oh my God, that's a nightmare, in the universities too. And I I look like a recorder, you know, like, hola, como esta? Mi nombre es en la casa. Like, I already know the speech by heart. Uh, so if I miss something, in the speech, I, I am not going to know what was it because it's like it already belittled there. And then the person would say, like, what is a game jam? <laughs> oh, sorry, I forgot to mention you. What is a game jam? <laughs> and all of that parts inside. So that is like the biggest challenge that I face because that doesn't let us grow inside these political spaces. And also because my organization is an NGO, they're like, um, haces jueguitos, like diminish me, my, my work. Uh, did they, did they tell see... you like tan grande jugando? Yeah, they, they, <laughs> love, they love the name, you know, because usually people feel that kind of, oh yeah, I want to keep on playing, but you're, you are making small games and they don't know that in Colombia, we have a lot of different IPs, like, IPs that are made here, like the Lord of the Rings game, its part is it's being made here. And also Ark, also was made, part of the game was made here. Also uh, the one of the clowns that I don't remember is made. The clowns from space. That is being made here in Colombia, uh, totally in Colombia. So it's like every year I am doing that and I am now going to have Canas. I don't know how to say canas in English. <laughs> canas verdes in English, but it's going to canas grow. Verdes, no sé. Canas verdes, no sé cómo <laughs> Gray green hair. Uh -huh. okay. uh -huh. Google not... Translate. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> also, um, well, that it's been working like in terms like we've been six years in the game dev industry and we are seeing it now like how we are stepping there and how we are changing all the stuff. So that's really, really nice about that. Um, but the other challenge is that it's still rocket science for people to understand that we have here again, that industry among all the problems that my colleagues here have addressed. And it is like, it is like we are doing something that it is not possible here. Uh, but now very important and i would like to tell you i have found in like the best ally that we have never 
uh, knock the door. We usually knock the door in the Ministry of Technologies, I believe, in all the countries. We're like, yeah, this is software development, so let's go with that. No, 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 it is now. What I've seen in all the politics, uh, and it is not only in Latin America, but also in Europe, what have grown that part of the game dev industry is not the ministry or the department of technologies. It is the cultural ministry. Ta -da! So we need to uh, arrange to the Secretaria de Educación, Secretaria de Cultura, to, to grow our game dev communities. And that's something that we are learning now after years of advocacy. So I want to die. Of course, money is something that it is really terrible for us, uh, but we have a policy, which is creativity kills budget. So if I can make this event with no money and it is a, still a good event, I can bring this focus for us. But if I cannot have a great event with only the budget that I have, so that means that it is a good event, it is not a good event. Hmm. And of course, all the events that you do are great events. So keep on doing those events. And how would you like to see your organization in five years, people, five years in the future? OK. Um, so um, my organization in five years, speaking about, I guess, our Cell Academy, uh, is, you know, having all these bridges of collaboration, collaboration put, put together, you know, in place, maybe, you know, having a, a lot of people, you know, entering jams, you know, I think it's the same answer as, as I provided in the last question, right? We, we want to see Latin America, you know, uh, unite as a single, you know, country and having, you know, all those games in the Latin America uh, showcase, you know, so that we will be even more happy. Uh, <laughs> And um, yeah, yeah, to be civilized, you know, I think uh, the video game industry, I think what, you know, Sol, Sandy also, you know, were, were telling is to be civilized, you know, all or, you know, uh, effort and, you know, or profession and also for, you know, all the game developers and every single person that, you know, works in the, in the video game industry that, that the the position of 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 this of this industry have to be dignified you know so where I, where do i see um my organization now in f 5 years regarding our cell academy uh, we would like to as uh, i mentioned reach out as many people who are interested in game audio and interconnect or connect with all these Latin um, Latin devs through jams, through conferences, and not even, not only, sorry, not only Latin America, but also the whole world, right? So having like a whole movement of, you know, music composers or sound designers collaborating with amazing um, game developers. So for more information about uh, our music and sound production studio for video games, you can visit us at www.arcellasound.com. And also you can reach out in Instagram at arcellasound. We will be happy to connect uh, with all of you. So if you have any doubts about our Cell Academy or even our studio or Cell Sound, feel free to reach uh, via Instagram or also via our website or even my um, my email, guido at arcelasound.com. Thank you so much and thank you Latinx in Gaming for inviting us to have this awesome panel with these awesome people. Thank you. Five years from now, I think I would love that Femdef Peru could be financially stable as in like right now, our most struggle is this to, you know, to contact sponsors, partners. So it would be nice that in five years, like we already have a big list of uh, companies and people that already love supporting our work. So it's, it will be just a thing of choosing the event and choosing the partners and, and people that we know will be like are perfect fit for that event. And that will be great. So we don't have to worry about uh, 
the expenses because uh, that's something that we struggle a lot and yeah we have to pay website uh, uh, I would love to pay my team definitely especially the ones in charge of uh, community management uh, the ones organizing the events uh, if if we invite people to have a talk would love to can maybe pay something to those people that are sharing their time with us um, yeah definitely all those things will be amazing also, I would love to have more events uh, on FemDev Peru. Right now, our, our biggest event is the Woman Game Jam, uh, and it's the only bigger, like the biggest event that we do during one year. So I think I would love to have at least another one or two other events during the year, like big events, big events, and then we we'll have a smaller ones, small gatherings, small maybe Discord talks or stuff. Um, just to keep increasing the women community, especially here uh, in Peru. And then I think I would love that we start um, also supporting financially other women uh, devs or maybe other women that are want to start a career in game development and they don't know where to start, maybe do some funding. I don't know. I think supporting in that way uh, it's it will have like it's a bigger challenge i think but i think it would be nice uh to have that too or maybe just not only in peru but also focus it in latam like women for in latam um yeah that'll be great and have more connections with the women across latin america i think woman game Jam has um has uh help a lot with that honestly that's why i i know sandy from Dangandi jugando or diana from women in game as like a lot of communities and i think i would love not only for me to know them but also the people in peru to know more about them and vice versa definitely for upcoming events uh well definitely woman game jam 2024 <laughs> and we also are planning some workshops for next year and definitely meetups, present on-site um, meetups, because we want to start connecting with the women developers here um, more often. We want to really create a community that I think the most important thing for us is that they also have trust in us, that, that they feel confident enough to just ask questions. Like, it's okay to not know anything. Like, I started like that in the industry and I want to share that feeling to towards all the girls that just like are interested but sometimes they're a little bit shy to us so we want to create these spaces where they can meet us know that like we, we want to be their friends you know we just meet each other know their work like um, i'm also a lot in contact with other companies here in peru so i would love to be kind of like um uh oh my god how do you say puente you know like a connection <laughs> for the girls that are starting to the companies and what they're looking for what can they do to apply to 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 the works you know all, all their questions all the things that they want to learn we'll be happy to to share that with them so we definitely want to create more spaces that where they can do that whatever that's on our discord which the i think the best thing about the discord would be that uh, not only people from Lima or Peru can uh, enter, but also from LATAM. And well, the on-site events will be definitely for the girls here in Peru. But who knows, maybe in the future we can also uh, invite other people to come. That will be amazing. If you want to know more about FabDev Peru, please uh, feel free to follow us on social media. We have Instagram, LinkedIn, um, um, Twitter, uh, Facebook. We are all at, at FemDev Peru. And of course, if you want to support what we do, please consider make a small donation on our PayPal or our coffee. We're gonna be posting more about the events and things that we do there. Also for more people to know more about what we are doing. Uh, we're gonna like start the sharing. We started sharing with the Woman Game Jam Recap, for example. We had 25 uh, participants and you know all the information is there uh you can read more about that if you're interested and yeah please uh every dollar counts so it's okay if you can just donate one dollar or whatever you you can and yeah that helps us a lot as, as i mentioned like we have a lot of things to plan uh resources to buy stuff so yeah definitely you're helping us a lot 
And in case you cannot donate, that's totally okay. Please feel free to just share our uh, posts, like them, retweet, you know, all that stuff, because that helps us a lot to promote the things that we do. And also you can support us by, I don't know, maybe you want, you are a game dev and you want to talk about a topic, please feel free to contact us. Uh, maybe you can be a mentor, you can be a panelist, you can make a talk, like a lot of things. You can always help. So please feel free to reach us at our email, uh, femdevs.peru at gmail.com. Uh, all of our info, it's on our website. So don't worry, you don't have to memorize anything right now. Uh, but yeah, please, uh, maybe if you don't, you have doubts, you want to donate, uh, you have a company maybe that is interested in donating, please talk to us. We have a lot of methods so people can donate, whatever it's transfer, PayPal, you know, uh, you just talk to us, talk to us and we'll be there. We'll be <laughs> definitely interested in having more people or companies supporting us. Um, so yeah, don't feel free short. Um, don't feel short about that. It's everything definitely counts and yeah consider having also like don't only consider donating to all these communities but also all the latam communities that are there are out there maybe you don't resonate so much with femme de Feru, but hey there's tan grande, colo uh, tan grande jugando there's woman in game X. so yeah feel free to go to the community that resonates with you that you it really inspires you and go help them go support them that we definitely uh need that support And well, yeah, thank you for this space. Thank you, Latins in Gaming, for having us and also for being our sponsors. Uh, Latins in Gaming community has always, um, I think, already like a lot of fans uh, promoting us and donating us. So, yeah, we're definitely grateful. And yeah, please feel free to reach out, whatever questions you might have, and hope to see you again later.